recipe does require yeast and you will need to let your dough rise, but I promise you that in the end, it'll be worth it. So let's get baking. The nice thing with this recipe, you can just add everything into the mixer. Don't worry about the salt ruining the yeast and all that. You do not need to proof the yeast. We're just gonna add everything in and then we're gonna let it rise. So let's add our water in. Now we're gonna add our yeast, one tablespoon. In my measuring cup, I have half of one third cup of oil and half of one third cup of honey. If you put the oil in first, it will prevent the honey from sticking to the measuring cup. So we're just gonna pour that in. I'm gonna add in two cups of bread flour. And now I'm gonna add in half a tablespoon of salt. I'm using kosher salt. Just gonna sprinkle that on. I'm gonna put the lid on my mixer and we're gonna turn it on low. I like to start out on low to give it time to get everything mixed together and then I'll turn it up. I'll give you a peek inside. You can see it's all coming together here. Now with my mixer running, I'm gonna add in more flour. Okay, let's take a look. You can see the dough is still wet, which I already know I have to add about two more cups of flour in. So I'm gonna turn this down. And I'm gonna add the flour in. I'm gonna add one and a half cups. I'm gonna let this get incorporated and then we will see if it needs more. Check out our dough. As you can see, it's pulled away from the sides. It's not too tacky. I'm gonna add a little bit more flour because it is still sticky. Just a little bit though. We don't wanna go over that fine edge of having too much flour. So I'm gonna let it mix. ready we have a bowl we're just gonna put a little bit of oil in it let's just roll our dough in the oil get it all around the side so it doesn't stick so let's cover it and let it rise our dough has risen so we're gonna get our pans ready so that we can put the dough in them I like to put a baggie on my hand and just get a little bit of butter on here. And we're just gonna rub it on the sides and then on the bottom. You just want a light coat on it. You don't want it to make the bread soggy. This will just help it to not stick. I'm also gonna do a pull-em loaf, which is a longer, kind of like a bread that you would buy in the store. So it has this and it has a cover on it and it simply gets slid on top and makes the bread flat on top. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna butter the inside. You can get these pans on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description. I am not an affiliate for Amazon, so anything I link in the description box, 
I do not earn anything off of. I have no incentive for you to buy it. I'm just offering you suggestions on what I use. And then we're also going to do the top here and get in the grooves because the bread will stick to the top. So you want to make sure that you get it in this little groove here because as you're trying to pull it off the bread, it will stick. I'm just getting the edges really good on the top. I flip my bread out. I'm just going to cut this. Since I'm doing one Pullman loaf and I'm doing one smaller pan, I'm going to cut this down. I'm going to set that aside. This will be the Pullman loaf. So you're just going to flatten it out. Try to form a rectangle. That'll make it easier. Okay, so we're going to roll this up. And as you go, make sure you spread these out so that it's even. Keep rolling it up. And when you get to the end, you're going to want to pinch the ends here to get them to combine. And then you're just going to kind of grab it and just kind of give it a shake. You want that seam to stay closed. So we're going to flip it back over. Scrunch it up a little bit. I'm going to get my Pullman pan and go, I'm going to look at the length. So this is kind of curved on the edge here. I'm going to trim that off. I like having the nice even edges. So I'm just going to, I'll put that in with my other loaf. And then we're going to look to see how much needs to come off this side. So it's going to go in. So we'll cut off this little nub at the end. We're going to put it in our pan. I'm going to cover this and it's going to rest and let it rise. Now we're going to do our smaller loaf. I have my pan here. So I have this piece of dough. I have these two little nubs. Just put them in the middle here. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to just flatten it out. Now I'm going to roll it up. Just want to tuck it in tight. And then just pinch. Give it a little rocking. Okay, flip it over, scrunch it up. And then we're going to put it in our pan. cover this up and let it rise. One thing I like to do in the summer to help my bread rise faster is I will boil water in my tea kettle and I have a dish down here. I just pour the boiling water into there and it'll create steam. I'll shut the oven and it helps it rise faster. Our bread dough has risen so now we're going to put it in the oven going to turn the oven on 350 degrees. I'll give you a peek inside of this one. Oh, that's the other side. So you can see, look how gorgeous that looks. Ah, oh, I love it. Slide that back over and get ready to put it in the oven. We're going to brush the top of the dough with melted butter. Now remember the Pullman loaf, we buttered the lid, so we don't need to butter that one. So as it heats up, that butter will melt on top. Get it all around the edges. I put my smaller pans on a sheet pan because as this bakes, it'll rise and the butter will come over and burn the bottom of your oven. So I always put it on a sheet pan. Okay guys, our bread is done. Look at that beauty. Now that our bread is done, you want to take it out of the loaf pan and put it on a rack because if you leave it in the pan, it will get soggy on the bottom from the steam and the heat. 
So we're just going to flip it out. You're going to turn it over and then we're going to brush the top with butter and it's going to give it that nice sheen. Look how gorgeous that looks. Oh guys, this is going to be so good to have our chicken sandwiches tonight. Now, if you're not sure whether or not your bread is done, you can take the temperature and you want it to be 190 degrees. But usually you can tell when it's done when it has that golden crust on top. 